Hello, everyone, and welcome to Oh My God on Cambridge Community Access Television. My name is Michael Mack, and each week at this time we get together and we talk about God, we talk about faith, we talk about life and death and meaning and being. We talk about the great questions. We try to answer the great questions, the great questions that we human beings have been trying to answer for tens of thousands of years. And I don't know if that we've found all the answers yet, uh, but we keep trying, and I think that's important. So, um, this week, I would like to honor the memory of a great man who we just lost, Ifani Menkiti, who is um, a Cambridge institution, I guess you could say, certainly was the owner of a Cambridge institution, owner of the Grolier Poetry Bookshop, with he and his wife, Carol, owners of the Grolier Poetry Bookshop in Harvard Square, just off of Mass Ave on Plimpton Street. And um, he saved poetry, some people say, but certainly, uh, he and his wife saved the Grolier, which is the oldest continually operating poetry bookstore in the United States. Possibly even North America, possibly even the Western Hemisphere, but for sure, it's the oldest continually operating poetry bookstore in the United States. And uh, we lost Ifani, sadly, on Father's Day. And so I had the uh, the honor and the privilege and the sorrow of going to his funeral mass yesterday with my beloved Christine and bearing witness to his life with his wife, Carol, and his four kids and his, I think, five grandkids. And it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful service. And it reminded me of something that I think of so often when we go to a funeral, we learn a lot about somebody that we thought we knew. Uh, somebody that we've known for a long time, have expected to be around for a long time. And when they pass away, it is often at a funeral that we learn some of the details of their lives uh, that come as a, um, a joy to, to have an even richer tapestry of a life behind this person. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Ifani passed away. He was in robust health until, until that final night. Uh, he was a night owl and a, a late night worker. And my understanding is that uh, when Carol went into his office in the morning, she found him at his desk um, doing what he loved to do. He was a poet, uh, had four volumes of poetry to his credit, uh, but that's just the beginning of his life and legacy. It was in 2006 that he and Carol bought the uh, Grolier Poetry Bookshop. It was, um, as I understand it, uh, in debt and needed a savior, and they answered that call. And so have been keeping the Grolier Bookshop uh, alive as a labor of love for the past, um, what, 13 years, I guess. The Grolier Poetry Bookshop was established first in 1927 and just celebrated its 90th anniversary um, just a couple of years ago. And if you haven't been, you should go. Because uh, you won't find a store like this anywhere, especially in this day and age. Um, especially a store that's so devoted to selling poetry and only poetry, with so much competition from online sellers, with so much competition from the major booksellers, it's, um, it really takes a scrappy presence, a scrappy initiative and, and um, um, willingness to fight the good fight. Um, and that is what Ifani and Carol have been bringing to the Grolier for the past uh, 13 years. 
So, if you haven't been, it's in Harvard Square. It's right off of Mass Ave on a little side street called Plimpton Street. It's actually just around the corner from the Harvard Bookstore. So, uh, you might have to peek when, once you reach Plimpton Street, but you will see a sign, Grolier Poetry Bookshop, just around the corner. And I invite you to go in. Um, it's tiny. It's about the size of a living room. It's 400 square feet. And when you go inside, the first thing that you might notice are the creaky floors. These are the same floors, I think, that it's had since 1927. And so a lot of feet have passed through this store, including most of the great poets of the 20th century. Um, name names, T.S. Eliot, E.E. Uh, uh, e. Cummings, uh, Marianne Moore, uh, the list just goes on and on and on. And I think that virtually every poet laureate, including Robert Pinsky, our local um, Robert Pinsky, has passed through the Grolier Bookshop. So I invite you to go just to check it out and maybe even buy a book because you will see the books floor to ceiling and pretty much whatever you're looking for, uh, they'll have it and they can certainly get it. Anyway, um, that was a little bit about the Grolier. Ifani Menkiti, I'd like to say a few words about him. Uh, he was a, he and his wife were parishioners at St. Paul Parish. Catholic Church, Harvard Square, uh, where I've been a parishioner myself. And so that was how I got to know them. Um, it was in 2005 that I started attending regularly at St. Paul's. That's where I began to get to know them. But like I mentioned, you can never really know somebody until you go to their funeral and you learn all the details, the backstory, the context out of which this person's life unfolded. Um, Ifani Menkiti, who passed away at the age of 78, was born, um, forgive me for forgetting the year, but he was born in Nigeria. Let me see, I might have it here. He was born in Nigeria in, born in Nigeria, August 24th, 1940. And he excelled at school and uh, so much so that he was awarded a scholarship to study at Pomona College in, in California. And from there, uh, continuing his um, great dedication to scholastics, he went on to get a degree in journalism, I think it was journalism, from Columbia University in New York. And uh, let me just double check, fact check. Um, Yes, MS in journalism from Columbia, and then um, an MA in philosophy from New York University. And it was while he was living in New York that he and Carol met. Carol uh, was from Texas, and he was from Nigeria, and it was, can I say that it was love at first sight? Well, uh, they would be the one to say. Um, but I believe that that was so. And it was after that that uh, they moved up here, they married, moved up here, and uh, Ifani continued his graduate work at Harvard University, got a doctorate in philosophy, and shortly after that, um, went to Wellesley to teach philosophy, where he taught for, I think, about 40 years. Um, retired in, was it 2014, maybe, somewhere around there? Anyway, a distinguished uh, doctor of philosophy. And all along the way, had been writing poetry. As I mentioned, he has four volumes of poetry to his name, and I will read one of them to you. Uh, why don't I read it for you right now? Um, fair to say that it is probably his signature work. It is the one that he is best known for. And the title of this poem is also the title of one of his books, I believe. Um, the title is Before a Common Soil, and I hope I will do it justice in its reading. Before a Common Soil. Let this, then, be your understanding. 
you sons and daughters of the ancient stars, that your home reaches beyond the earth, which is your home. May you go forth across the land and with the movement of flutes celebrate the blessings which the gods have given you. May you catch the shifting of the light at the tip of the flute's tongue. And may you ask of the darkness that it remain with you, lest you, lest the light lose sight of whence it came. Yes, I have heard song, the power of which was not of the world, though the singer of it was in the world. And I have called out to you, children of the undivided earth, that you join your hands together and be of one accord before a common soil, lest the rivers cease to water the land, lest the voices of the singers be forever stilled. Yes, I have heard song, the power of which was not of the world, though the singer of it was in the world. To me, the repetition of that last stanza, hearing it earlier and hearing it again, really speaks to, for me, the essence of the poem. That the writer, in this case Ifani, has heard the song, the power of which was not of the world. It didn't come from the world. Though the singer of it, the singer of the song, each and every one of us, are in the world, that there is something else going on. And of course, on a show like, oh my God, we want to ask what's going on. We want to ask about, we want to delve deeper into the mystery of life and the mystery of death, which is a part of life. One of the things about going to a funeral is that we get to remember each and every one of us, we're here for a little while. We don't know how long. Could be for a long while. In Ifani's case, it was 78 years. Could be a shorter while. I, at a different church that I attend, um, one of our parishioners just lost, lost a, uh, a child at, um, in pregnancy. It was stillborn. And so we never really know uh, at what point we will be called. And years ago, I had a spiritual director who said to me, who suggested to me that I begin the day every day with the words, thank you. Thank you for this chance to begin again. Thank you for this opportunity to try again and to make of this new day a better day than the day before. To begin with hope, to begin with affirmation, to begin with yes, and to begin in gratitude. Another of the great experiences of a funeral is that there is an outpouring of gratitude from those who attend and so many of us who attended got glimpses of the person who was Ifani Menkiti, but none of us saw the whole person, except perhaps uh, his wife and his kids. But even they, I suggest, caught a larger glimpse than the rest of us, but no one gets the whole picture. It is only that the sum total of us in sharing the memory of another that we can begin to approach the whole person, the mystery of the whole person. It is a mystery to be who and what we are. As suggested in the poem, we come from stars. We are made of stardust, that the atoms and molecules that form this form that is myself, Michael Mack, that is you, viewer, comes from stars. 
and we will return to the stars in some way. It may take millions of years, but our atoms and molecules will join with Well, you know, I'm not a scientist. Um, I think that it's still current, the thinking that the universe, the entirety of the universe began with a Big Bang. That there was, that it began with a single point. I think some have suggested in the suggestion that the universe is actually a composition of many universes, a multiverse, that maybe the universe was born out of a black hole in an older universe, in an earlier universe. Don't know. Theoretical. But I think that scientists agree that we came from a single point, from an infinitely compressed single point that exploded and became the universe that we are all inhabiting. And all of the components of this universe the atoms and the molecules and the dust and the matter and the energy all came out of that single point. And this poem references, I think, that single point, that unity out of which we all came. Let me see if I can find it. That... I have called out to you, children of the undivided earth, that you join your hands together and be of one accord before a common soil, before a shared soil. Well, none of us can say for sure what's going to happen when we go. Many have Many believe many different things. Ifani Menkiti was a uh, lifelong Catholic, I'm pretty sure, and uh, worshipped within the Catholic tradition and within the Catholic, within the Christian tradition. Um, we will all return to the source from whence we came. Um, I'll let the theologians work out exactly what that means. But for myself, I'm inclined to believe that we all came from love. We all came from the single point of love that was the birth of the universe. And we have been expanding ever since in love out into the universe. And in fact, according to scientists now, the universe is not only expanding, it is accelerating going faster and faster, outward and outward. I like to think that we are expanding in love, even though, as we look at the world, as we look at the world around us, it's easy to fasten on the struggle, the strife, the discord, and all in the world that is painful all in the world that is suffering. But I'm, kind, I'm inclined to believe in something greater that we are all part of and we can only get tiny, tiny, tiny glimpses of now. And we can glimpse actually in each other, that we can find in each other sparks of light that remind us of the goodness within us. And Ifani Menkiti, I think, was a glowing example of that light, a glowing example of that goodness. He was uh, certainly a great benefactor to the Grolier Poetry Bookshop, um, but gave in countless other ways as well uh, to his students, to his fellow parishioners, um, was, had a great magnanimous heart and a big laugh. I remember that about him. And there was something else I remember about him, something that I f feel a particular kinship with. Um, and I'll share with you common knowledge. A few years ago, I learned that he washed his clothes by hand, himself. I don't know where he picked this up, maybe when he was a child in Nigeria, but ever since uh, then, but, and certainly lately, 
Um, his habit has been to wash his own clothes and wash them by hand. And I do that too. So I was delighted to learn that from him. I don't know why he did it, except perhaps, um, especially later in life, it had become tradition, it had become um, a personal testimony to habit. Um, for me, it's kind of a pain in the butt. There's no, um, there's kind of a pain in the butt to find and use a laundromat. And um, so it's simpler for me uh, to, uh, to just wash my own clothes by hand in a bucket that I have just for that purpose. And it's, um, it's meditative, it gives me an opportunity to, uh, to pray, to meditate, to contemplate. Um, what is that expression? After the ecstasy, the laundry, or um, after enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. Well, most of life is lived in the mundane. But we do have these moments, and we can find them, I believe, each and every day. We can find these moments of uplift, these moments where our heart, where our soul, where our spirit ascends. And we come to recognize that we are part of something big. We're part of a big deal, a big mystery. And all you need to do is to know a little bit about astrophysics to, to think, wow, you know, it's pretty darn amazing. We have lots of explanations for the doings of the world, the doings of the universe. And over time, over the centuries, our explanations have evolved. But ultimately, to quote my mom in a poem of my own, explanations ain't the reasons why. There's something bigger going on. We're part of a mystery. We're part of an inexpressible mystery. And if we can remember that, even if it's just once a day, maybe when we wake up, maybe when we say thank you for another shot, thank you for another chance, to pause for a moment before we wade out into the day or surge into the day or run into the day, pause for a moment just to think, well, I'm back. I'm back for a little while. May I do something beautiful with this day. I can't help but think of the quote from Mother Teresa of Calcutta, uh, that her work was to create, to do something beautiful for God, to make something beautiful for God. <coughs> Which I think really, even more simply, is saying, just to make something beautiful. Because I believe, I believe that to create something beautiful, to make something beautiful, is to be in the image and likeness of God that we are, that we are told in the book of Genesis that we are. We are created to create. We are created to create good. And to share this good with the world to whatever degree and in whatever way we can. Personally, I think that every blade of grass is giving its all to the world by being what it was born to be, meant to be. And so I want to celebrate Ifani Menkidi as his own very unique blade of grass. And looks like I've got two minutes left. Let me end with his poem once again, Before a Common Soil, by Ifani Menkiti. Let this, then, be your understanding, you sons and daughters of the ancient stars, that your home reaches beyond the earth, which is your home. May you go forth across the land and with the movement of flutes celebrate the blessings which the gods have given you. May you catch the shifting of the light at the tip of the flute's tongue 
and may you ask of the darkness that it remain with you, lest the light lose sight of whence it came. Yes, I have heard song, the power of which was not of the world, though the singer of it was in the world. And I have called out to you, children of the undivided earth, that you join your hands together and be of one accord before a common soil, lest the rivers cease to water the land, lest the voices of the singers be forever stilled. Yes, I have heard song, the power of which was not of the world, though the singer of it was in the world. God bless you, Ifani Menkiti, singer of this song and many songs, singer of the song of life. May you and all of your family and all that who have known you be blessed as you ascend.